So, uh, you know, last couple of months, a uh, couple of months back, there was this news about Docker Hub, which is the most popular repository of container images, uh, getting hacked. And uh, a plenty of data was compromised. And that's, in, if this kind of situation arises, in, uh, in a registry which is uh, popular regularly, what could happen is uh, an attacker can uh, change the uh, images that you trust while download, uh, where that you download, and uh, you may end up downloading the images that you, uh, that are actually compromised. Uh, so, and this this does not mean that it only happens in the case of uh, Docker Hub. You could have your own registry, and uh, this could happen in 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 anyone's case. So. But you, yeah, you might argue that there are ways to prevent that. If anyone gets, uh, let's say, uh, an access to your registry, uh, you could have a Docker notary or, or a portary set up in a way that uh, even if your registry server gets compromised, your signed images will not match, and uh, you still can protect yourself in such scenario. However, you, uh, you are the, if your registry uh, holds images which have uh, sensitive content in it it does not prevent you uh, prevent it from uh, get the, the code getting compromised uh, in that sense uh, let's see uh, how, how we can uh, envision a, envision a, a scenario where uh, we can mitigate such attacks so all what we are looking for here is we have we, we need to be able to create container images where we should be able to uh, during the build process, we should be able to encrypt them, and then upload it to the registry, and then uh, decrypt them while you run them using, let's say, Kubernetes. That way, uh, the advantage of the, that, that process is uh, you do not de uh, depend on uh, registry being uh, highly privileged. So, as I was talking, so if, if you start, if you think about image encrypting your Docker images, you do not uh, uh, need to have extremely high privilege registry. Uh, that means you do not have to trust your administrator, uh, either malicious or uh, other intentional or unintentional compromise of your registry, as well as uh, it brings in image confidentiality. So you, you, you can have a, a extremely confidential uh, algorithms, like say uh, you might have uh, a trained TensorFlow model, for example, which you do not want to be exposed to the outside world. Um, you can argue that you know you can uh, keep the registry password protected, but even in that case, the administrator, all the or the where the uh, registry is hosted, storing the data, uh, has access to the contents of the store. So, and and once you bring in encryption, it uh, it it allows you to do a lot of interesting stuff. Like for example, uh, you can sign the container images with the uh, uh, target system's uh, uh, public key in such a way that you can enforce that the container images that I'm building will run only in specific geographics. Geographies, uh, uh, for example, you can say image, a particular image will only run inside the European, Uni European Union's uh, uh, geographic borders. So uh, let's see how we can in uh, envision this. Uh, now, the, I'd like to tell you that uh, the work has been happening all the way from OCI spec and Kubernetes and anything in between. And uh, we, are, we are talking to all these communities. And the final uh, output that you may say uh, when everything falls in line uh, may or may not actually overlap with what I'm saying right now. But uh, it will be very similar to this. So let's see uh, how, how we were able to encrypt the uh, container image. So you have a, a Docker build command, let's say imagine, and you should be able to pass a public key. So I, let's say I want to. Uh, be able to create a container image in such a way that I, only Brandon should be able to run it. So I take his public key during the Docker build uh, process. I should be able to take his public key, encrypt it, and then this this encrypted key I will push it to the registry. Once inside the registry, uh, it it, would, it gets interesting how you're gonna uh, use it or consume it within the context of Kubernetes. So we all know Kubernetes has this concept of secrets, right? Uh, a Kubernetes secret is is a way to store uh, sensitive data within the within the confines of Kubernetes. So, and there is a very particular type of secret called image pool secret. Uh, this secret is used for uh, fetching the uh, uh, images that are uh, behind the username password in the registry. 
So we thought that we have a very similar use case here, uh, where instead of pulling the image, we want to decrypt the image on the host, right? So we, we started modeling our uh, the secret that holds the pri the private keys required to decrypt the images, and we are calling them image decrypt secret. Uh, for this work, we already have submitted KEP and is under discussion. Um, as I mentioned, we are already talking to OCI spec. There is a PR in container D to support it because you need to have this support all the way throughout the stack. So once you have the secret, what the, the flow will look like, you know, if, if there is a request by the user to create an encrypted part, uh, the image secret, uh, image uh, decrypt uh, secret uh, will, will basically provide the uh, keys required. And the pod will create it with the keys that are required, and those keys will be pushed down to the uh, Kubernetes worker node. And then the worker node, the kubelet will receive those keys, that will be passed to CRI, from CRI to container D, and the container D will, while pulling the image, will also decrypt the image. And then uh, it, it flow, follows the standard uh, container D uh, uh, workflow. So let me quickly show a demo. <laughs> yeah, this is strange. So, uh, let me just say clear, and then let me go to container D. So although I talked about Docker build, uh, to begin with, we started playing with container D directly because that was easier to deal with. And Docker build, end of the day, will end up invoking something similar. So let me see. As you can see, you only have one image right now, uh, Nginx. And then on, the, on this system, I have uh, a sample uh, GPGK key pair. And, uh, I'm going to use that to encrypt the image first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say take this image encrypted, uh, take this uh, Nginx image and encrypt it with the the key that I'm asking it to. So it's going to encrypt that image. All right. Then let's list it, and there we go. You have this encrypted image. How? So just to understand things better. We added a small uh, command in container D, which helps you to see the images. So I'll just zoom out a little bit. Yeah, so you see there is the uh, image here which says encryption and recipients, none. So this is what you'll see for a regular the container image right now that, we are, that everyone is used to. But if you try to use the layer info against the encrypted image, uh, you have a GPG and the target system, target recipient's address in that. So it, it basically means that this image can only be decrypted with this target uh, uh, key that is showing. So let me just clear this. Let me just push this image. We lost it? Oh, okay, we have it. Let me just push the image to the local registry that. Okay, cool. Clear. And now I'm going to. Change it, and this is the standard Kubernetes secret. It's a it's it's a default token that we have here, and then now what happens? The the, the image that we just encrypted, if we try to deploy it, let's say you you are running this register, you upload it to the uh, public registry, your encrypted image, and someone tries to download and run it. So let's see how it how it reacts to that. So I do not have the private key at this point, and I'm trying to run an encrypted image. It just got created. Let me just wait for a second. Yeah, so I got an error. Let's see what the error is. As you can see, you are not authorized to uh, uh, run this image, and the missing private keys needed for decryption. So think of it this way: that if you had an encrypted image in a in a public repository like this, whether it is protected by password or not, if someone tries to run that image without having the private keys or without having the Target system that is encrypted for, uh, you will you are supposed to get. Yeah, I think we are doing fine. We we, we figured it out. <laughs> so yeah, so without uh, so we we are uh, you will get this error. So let's see how we can run uh, an encrypted image. I'll just delete this part. Okay. Remember that key that keeper that I had. Uh, I had already. Uh, extracted the uh, private key 
require uh, from this uh, BP key pair and I have uh, uh, added uh, converted into base 64 and I'll create a secret so this is a secret that we are introducing in Kubernetes so uh, I'm saying create a new secret type of image decrypt with this private key so when you get secret there you go now you have a key secret let's let's go deeper in that yeah so it holds the decryption decryption key the the base 64 uh, uh, key that we had clear and you get parts let's see so we will modify our pod yaml slightly so instead of having this uh, when you want to run this engine en encrypted image uh, we'll have to provide the pre key that that kubernetes should pass down to the worker node so we'll say image decrypt secrets name key secret the key secret is the one which we just uh, created let's try to create this part okay yeah get part and it works so the earlier uh, when i tried to run this image via without uh, Without the secret, uh, you, you remember you got an error saying you do not have, you're not authorized to run this image. But now I'm able to because I, I associated this part with the right secret, and the, that secret was passed to uh, Kubelet, then Kubelet passed to CRI, and CRI eventually gave it to ContainerD, and that uh, ContainerD was able to uh, extract the not only extra uh, uh, untar the image but able to dec decrypt as well. Um, let's delete this. Uh, however, those who know, those of us know how to use the uh, secrets a uh, little um, in an elegant way we know that we can use service accounts in kubernetes to pass secrets so uh, we plan to support uh, uh, service accounts for image decrypt secrets as well so let's see how we can achieve that so we'll first patch our service account with the secret that we already created and we'll say describe the service account and if you see this is a new new thing that we're trying to add here so now this service account has the image de uh, decrypt secret. So that means every pod that gets created with this service account will also have an access to the secret. Uh, okay. Now this time, if you see, I'm trying to start the same uh, pod or deploy the same pod, but without any image decrypt secrets. And this time, I do not have to have because this pod uh, is going to access a default service account. So let's see how it works. Create and it's working, right? So I think that that's that's completes my demo quickly, and I jump back to the. Thing. So if you want to, if you want to, thanks, Brandon. <laughs> so uh, if you want to uh, know more, understand more about the work going on, uh, please uh, visit these links. Uh, uh, we have a, a like a, a very good and detailed discussion going on on all topics, uh, and we hope to get this merge very soon and uh, with that uh, i will will de dive deeper in that and uh, i'll hand it over to brandon all right thanks Hashel. um so we're not done yet sorry <laughs> um so um so what i'm going to talk a little bit about is about um, our design in the encrypted container images and um how it relates to deduplication because you know, the conventional knowledge is that whenever you have encryption, you're going to suffer in terms of deduplication because you can't, every time you encrypt something, it's going to be different. All right. Uh, but in the process of designing this, we also consider that this is one of the reasons why people like containers. It's a layer deduplication, the layering. Um, and we're going to show that uh, in the way that we design it, deduplication is not necessarily um, thrown away once you have encryption. So I'm going to go through a deep dive. I'm going to start with a little bit of um, crypto background. So just bear with me a little bit. Um, so we're going to go through um, a short primer of encryption. So, um, so we're using two kinds of encryption. We're using symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption. Uh, so for those that uh, may not be as familiar with encryption, uh, what symmetric encryption is, is um, you have a piece of plain text, um, so a message you want to encrypt and you have a key, which is a symmetric key. Now in symmetric encryption, the key that you use to perform the encryption and decryption is the same. So this is good because this is gen and symmetric encryption is generally really fast. It's good for really large blocks of data. 
Uh, unfortunately, the issue with symmetric encryption is sharing this um, this key over here proves difficult, right? So we also introduced asymmetric encryption. So asymmetric encryption has pretty much the same setup, except that instead of having one key, you have a key pair. So you have the public and private key pair. Um, and so in this case, to encrypt the message, you would use the public key. And the encrypted message will be decrypted by the private key. Um, so the great thing about asymmetric encryption is the public key, as the name suggests, um, can be public. So this makes um, being able to authorize an encrypted image to someone or to be able to share keys, um, it will be made much simpler. Um, unfortunately, it's slow. So what we do is um, very like um, most type of encrypted messages, if you think about encrypted email and things like that, uh, we're kind of following the same kind of de design concepts. So we're, what we're doing is we're taking symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption and getting the, both, the best of both worlds. Um, so this flow may be familiar. We have um, our favorite people in crypto, Bob and Alice. And so in this case, Bob wants to send an encrypted image to Alice. Don't worry, we haven't forgotten about the duplication. We're getting that soon. Um, all right, so Bob does a build, and what it does is it generates a symmetric key, and this symmetric key is used to encrypt the image. So now we have an encrypted image. And what we want to do is we want to say that this is the image I want to encrypt for Alice, right? So we somehow have to get that uh, yellow symmetric key over to Alice. And the way we do this is to take Alice's public key and create uh, what we call a wrap key. So this wrap key you can think about as a message that contains uh, the symmetric key as well as all the cryptographic metadata required to understand how to decrypt the image. So this wrap key can only be decrypted by Alice and uh, what Bob does to expose that image is to upload these two things into the registry. So on Alice's side, um, to be able to decrypt the image is pretty much um, the opposite of what we saw earlier. Right? She takes the wrap key uh, that only she can open and decrypts it with her own private key, which only she has access to. And from there, she gets the symmetric key as well as the parameters to perform the decryption. And she successfully decrypts the image. So how does this relate to um, what the images actually look like? So if we dive deep into um, what changes we are looking at in the OCI spec, um, to, so to start off with what we have here is uh, what the OCI spec looks, image spec looks like today, right? So um, the image spec, at least in, in here you see the manifest, is really um, some metadata about the image itself and each layer is basically a blob of uh, a collection of files. And in this case, the files are just tied up, right? So it's a blob that is represented by the SHA. So what we're doing and the, the, the design decision that we've made is to perform encryption on the layer level. So in this case, um, on top of performing the tar and the gzip of the collection of files, we're doing the additional step in generating the symmetric key and performing the encryption on every layer. So the changes here to the spec are pretty straightforward. One is we've added a new media type. So we've added the plus ENC media type standing um, abbreviated for encryption. And what this means is it tells the runtime that this image is encrypted and it's going to try and decrypt it. And we've also added an additional field in the annotations here called the keys. And what these keys are are the wrapped keys that we saw earlier. So um, the keys here could be a wrap key for Alice, a wrap key for Bob, and so on. So one interesting thing, um, so now we're back to the duplication, right? Um, so the, the general thought of this is that um, by doing encryption on the layers, we are able to take advantage of um, a lot of container-like um, design behaviors. So generally, if you have a container, your container made out of a couple layers. So you have like the operating system, you have the middleware like Python. And then usually if you have a sensitive piece of code, it's a very small 
um, a very small piece of code. It may be like trading algorithm or um, maybe a machine learning model or something, right? And so what it means uh, when we do encryption on the layers is that we can benefit from this because the bottom layers, which uh, end up being the larger layers, actually don't have to be encrypted at all. And so this, these layers can still be shared. Um, you know, you can encrypt just the topmost layer for a couple of images. Um, so that's one. Um, the second thing, uh, which is why we talked a little bit about how we ended up doing the crypto, is that let's say I want to encrypt an image um, for myself, I want to encrypt an image for Harshal and um, you know five other people, right? So traditionally, what um, what you would do is you know I would encrypt once for Harshal, I would encrypt once for myself, I would encrypt once for the five other people. Um, but if if we look at the spec, we can see here that um, the way we've done it is we split up the actual encrypted blob separate from the rep key itself. So what this means is that if I want to create an encrypted image for multiple people, I can have the same encrypted blob and just upload five different rep keys uh, for the five different people. So in this way, if I want to be able to give authorization to additional parties to decrypt my image, I can do so without actually changing the hash of the blob in the registry. All right, so um, this is work that um, is currently ongoing. I think as Hasho mentioned before, this is something that um, we, we started off in the OCI spec and then it's made its way and through the entire stack between OCI, you know, container D, um, uh, Kubelet, and so on. Um, so one thing is we're, tr we're still trying to get this. Um, we have a PR open for the OCI spec. And you know, if you have any um, views or you know, if you like this feature, do definitely chime in on that. Um, we have ongoing work like the KAP that we just showed. Um, we're also looking to integrate this to basically everything within the SAC. So um, the build tools and Creo support as well. Uh, and finally, one thing that we're looking at also in the long term is um, when we're talking about this encryption stuff, when we want uh, features like geo execution, uh, geofencing execution, um, we want to really be able to tie this to crypto cryptographic keys that we have higher assurance on. So this would be, you know, how do I interface with TPMs? How do I interface with HSMs? Um, is there FIPS compliance within my crypto libraries within the entire process? Um, so that is something that is still um, that is still in the pipeline. All right. So yeah, that's all we had for today. Um, so yeah, do feel free to ask any questions. Okay, um, it might be a stupid one, but my question is, we are solving one problem, but how do we, so how do we um, manage those keys? What's the plan to manage? Are we integrating it with any key wall solutions, or what kind of solutions we are integrating it with? So um, right now, the, the way that we've set this up is that um, the key management solutions are not necessarily tied to the technology. So you can still be able to bootstrap your keys through any key management solution that you have. Um, but with features that you're talking about, so, so you could use like Vault or Key Protect or Azure Key, um, key, key Vault. Um, but when you talk about being able to tie it more tightly with the keys, and this comes into, um, I think one of this here is like uh, key management key wrapping services. So some key management systems actually allow you to perform key wrapping and unwrapping of the server so the key never actually leaves the key management service. Um, so in that sense that there's still a bit of work there to have a very tightly integrated solution. Um, but right now, the way that we have it is that um, we still rely on an external process for that. We do have, so there are two models of this, right? One, one of the models that 
um, we just saw is that you're taking a secret and you're putting it in the Kubernetes secrets, right? So you will manage that secret the same way you will manage your image pool secret. There is another model that we have looked at and we have some prototypes on, which is that really my key management and authorization is tied to the host. So in this case, what we're doing is we have a prototype that actually injects this in the runtime. So there's validation within our key management service to uh, the node. So it does attestation of the node to ensure that it's authorized to obtain a key. Uh, and this you know, ties back to a root of trust like a TPM or something. And for that, we deliver the keys through the runtime. So there, there are a couple of models. Yeah. yeah, and to add into his, uh, uh, you you can use uh, KMS uh, services with uh, existing Kubernetes secrets. And this is another type of secret. So uh, if you can tie up your Kubernetes uh, to your uh, key service provider, uh, all your keys get, instead of they staying in the master, uh, they, they get pushed to the your choice of uh, key, uh, key KMS. Uh, so similarly, this is not any different. This is just another type of secret. So that will transparently get get attached to the uh, KMS. Thank you. Yeah. Can we decide which level of layer has to be encrypted, and you know which uh, does not need encryption? Uh, do, uh, do you mean uh, can you selectively do encryption yeah, or yeah. yeah, you can. Okay. It doesn't have to be the topmost. It it can be anything in between either. Yeah. One more question. Uh, how much? Uh, a more resource do you need uh, during the encryption of uh, decryption uh, images? Um, or maybe so, the percentage? So you're talking about overhead, right? Yeah, um, during the encryption and uh, description of the image and, and uh, how much more resource you need. So this is something that we haven't measured in a while, but theoretically it shouldn't take up that much resource. So um, the way that we've with the implementation that we have uses a streaming type of cipher. So in terms of um, the encryption process, it's part of the pipeline. So although there can be like, it's the latency is very minimal, but the bandwidth is still going to be about the same. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's, uh, if you deploy them uh, more images, it uh, depends on, uh, it uh, will be uh, using more resource to, to deploy it, right? Um, yeah, but I, you need to do this only once when the first time image comes in because the container will extract it or any runtime will extract it and keep it on a host. So it's not something which gonna get executed or get, get, gonna, get gonna execute every time you run the container. Uh, this is only first time the image is, has to be pulled on the host. And uh, second thing is the way we have uh, implemented is we, uh, next time there is a, uh, a request to, request comes to uh, deploy an encrypted image, we do not download again. We, we can check against the existing uh, extracted image, uh, and we call it image authorization. Yeah. So if you so there are two concerns. One is like the latency concern, which I don't think we're that worried about because the pool latency is still a lot more than decryption latency. Um, the other the other resource concern you may be worried about is maybe you know how much actual computation there is. And that's why, like in our design, we a bulk of the encryption is um, symmetric encryption, which isn't really that. Um, it's pretty efficient. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have one question: Is that um, <coughs> suppose you have those encrypted image and you put it in a registry? Um, how are tools like you know, a vulnerability scanning going to work if, if it's encrypted? That's a good question. So we actually, we, we left out this slide. Um, so there are two ways to do it, right? Well, actually there are three ways to do it. Um, so, so there are two main ways that we kind of recommend. One of which is um, you could actually, so you know when you saw the wrap keys earlier? You know, I, I created a rep key for Atlas, I created a rep key for Harshal. So what you can do in the creation of the DevOps pipeline is that you can say that if I trust a certain service, for example, I have a vulnerability scanning service, right? So I say that this vulnerability scanning service has a particular key pair. So I can say that I'm going to encrypt a rep key for this service. So if I trust the service, the service that pulls the image should be able to decrypt it. Um, the other way to do it is we're trying to see whether people are accepting to move the vulnerability scans before it goes to the registry. <laughs> Which, um, there are 
advantages and disadvantages that gets trade off. Yeah, but no matter both ways, we have models that would would be able to um, to solve the issue. Uh, just a quick question. So, uh, is the uh, let's say I'm going to uh, encrypt the image twice. Is it going to generate the same symmetric key or different symmetric key? Yes. Okay. So, um, if you're gonna generate the same image twice, it's gonna be a different symmetric key. Even for the same user. So okay, so what what you can do? So let me. So what we do in this is that um, generally, when you encrypt the image, um, you when you create the wrap keys, you're gonna create one for yourself. So if you're gonna be able to, if you want to add a recipient, let's say you want to add a new recipient, you don't have to re-encrypt the image. Basically, what you're gonna say is, I want to add this recipient. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna decrypt your own wrap key and then rewrap a wrap key for the new person. So if it detects that the layer is the same, um, I don't think we I don't think we do probably to the the extent of figuring out that the layer is the same and doing it. But if you have knowledge of that, you can specifically say I just want to rewrap the key. Okay, yeah. so just following question. So is there any expiration for the for the key for the wrap key? The expiration for the key, yeah. So it, I think that's something that's gonna differ, differ to the key management solutions. Okay. So yeah, that will be have to include the process of your DevOps pipeline. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Any more questions? All right. All right. Thank you very much.